Adana woke with a start, her head pounding and her vision blurry. As her eyes adjusted to the dim light, she realized with growing horror that she was no longer in her own room. The air was thick with the scent of herbs and incense, and the walls around her were made of rough mud, nothing like the polished surfaces of her usual quarters. Panic seized her as memories of the previous night came flooding back, Obiora offering her the palm wine, the strange taste, the heaviness that had overcome her limbs. She tried to move, but found her wrists and ankles bound tightly to a wooden platform. Hello, she called out, her voice hoarse and barely above a whisper. Is anyone there? Silence was her only answer. As her eyes continued to adjust, Adana began to make out shapes in the gloom. Strange symbols were carved into the walls, and bundles of dried herbs hung from the low ceiling. In one corner, a large clay pot bubbled ominously over a small fire. Suddenly the door creaked open, and Obiora stepped inside, his imposing figure silhouetted against the faint light from outside. Ah, you're awake, he said, his voice unnervingly calm. Good, we can begin. Begin what? Adana asked, struggling against her bonds. What is this place? Why am I tied up? Obiora moved closer, his eyes gleaming in the firelight. This, my dear wife, is where you will fulfill your true purpose, where you will become one with our family. A chill ran down Adana's spine. What do you mean? Please, Obiora, let me go. I don't understand what's happening. He shook his head, a small smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Oh, but you will. Soon you will understand everything. With that, he turned and called out, Bring her in. The door opened wider, and two of Obiora's guards entered, half carrying, half dragging a woman between them. Adana gasped as she recognized the woman from that night, the one she had seen leaving this very hut, dressed all in white. The woman's eyes were glazed over, her movements slow and uncoordinated. She didn't seem to register her surroundings or the people around her. What have you done to her? Adana cried, renewing her struggles against the ropes. Obiora placed a hand on the woman's shoulder. This is Amara. She was my wife before you, just as you will one day be replaced by another. But do not fear, my dear Adana. You are not being cast aside. No, you are being elevated. He gestured to the guards, who began to undress Amara. Adana squeezed her eyes shut, not wanting to witness what was happening, but she couldn't block out the sounds, the rustling of fabric. Amara's quiet whimpers, Obiora's murmured instructions. When she finally gathered the courage to look again, Amara was lying on a similar platform across the room, her skin glistening with some kind of oil that Obiora had applied. Watch closely, Adana, Obiora commanded, for this is your future. He began to chant in a language Adana didn't recognize, his voice rising and falling in a hypnotic rhythm. As he spoke, he sprinkled a fine powder over Amara's body. To Adana's horror, Amara's skin began to change. It took on a pearlescent sheen, hardening and forming into scales. Her legs fused together, elongating into a powerful tail, her face contorted, features flattening and reshaping. Adana couldn't hold back her scream as she watched Amara transform into the very python she had seen that terrifying night. Obiora turned to her, his eyes gleaming with an unnatural light. Do you see now, my wife? This is the source of our wealth, our power. Each wife gives herself to the python, becoming one with it, fueling its magic. And in return, we prosper. Adana shook her head violently, tears streaming down her face. No, this is madness. I won't do it. You can't make me. Oh, but I can, Obiora said softly, moving towards her with the bowl of powder in his hands. And I will. But not yet. First, you must be prepared. As he reached out to touch her, a commotion outside the hut caught their attention. Shouts and the sound of fighting penetrated the thick walls. Obiora's face darkened. What now? he growled, striding towards the door, but before he could reach it, it burst open. To Adana's shock and joy, Ikenna stood in the doorway, his chest heaving and a determined look in his eyes. Get away from her, he shouted, brandishing a machete. Obiora's guards rushed forward, but Ikenna was quicker. He ducked under their grasping hands and made straight for Adana. 
Ikenna, she cried. How did you find me? I never stopped looking, he said, quickly cutting through her bonds. Come on, we have to get out of here. Obiora's face contorted with rage. You dare interfere with my ritual? You will pay for this, boy. But as he lunged forward, the huge white python, the one that had once been Amara, suddenly reared up between them. It hissed menacingly, its eyes fixed on Obiora. Taking advantage of the distraction, Ikenna scooped Adana into his arms and ran from the hut. Outside, chaos reigned. It seemed Ikenna hadn't come alone. A group of young men from the village were fighting with Obiora's guards, creating enough confusion for the couple to slip away. They ran through the compound, hearts pounding, expecting at any moment to be caught. But somehow, miraculously, they made it to the main gate. A horse was waiting, and Ikenna quickly helped Adana onto its back before swinging up behind her. As they galloped away, Adana clung to Ikenna, her mind reeling from everything that had happened. She glanced back once to see Obiora standing at the gate, his face a mask of fury. The white python was coiled around his feet, its unblinking eyes fixed on the retreating horse. They rode hard through the night, not daring to stop until they were far from Obiora's compound. As dawn broke, Ikenna finally reined in the horse near a small stream. Are you all right? he asked, helping Adana down. Did he hurt you? Adana shook her head, still in shock. I... I don't know. Ikenna, the things I saw, it was horrible. Those women, the snake. Ikenna pulled her into a tight embrace. It's over now. You're safe. I won't let him touch you again. As the adrenaline began to wear off, Adana's legs gave way. Ikenna gently lowered her to the ground, cradling her in his arms. How did you know? she asked. How did you find me? Ikenna's face grew serious. After you left, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. I started asking questions, digging into Obiora's past, the things I learned. He shook his head. I knew I had to get you out of there. But the men who helped us, friends from the village, once they heard what was happening, they insisted on coming. Obiora may be powerful, but he's not invincible. Adana leaned against him, exhaustion overtaking her. What do we do now? Where can we go? Obiora will be looking for us. Ikenna stroked her hair gently. I have a plan. There's a place far from here where we can be safe. But first, we need to rest and gather supplies. As they sat by the stream, the enormity of what had happened began to sink in. Adana had escaped a fate worse than death. But at what cost? Her family, her home, everything she had known was now lost to her. Ikenna, she said softly, thank you for not giving up on me for saving me. He tilted her chin up, meeting her eyes. I will always come for you, Adana. Always. Their lips met in a tender kiss, a promise of love and protection in a world that had suddenly become far more dangerous and uncertain. As the sun rose higher in the sky, they knew they couldn't linger. They had to keep moving, stay ahead of Obiora and whatever dark forces he might send after them. Ikenna helped Adana back onto the horse. Are you ready? he asked. She nodded, her arms tightening around his waist. As long as I'm with you, I'm ready for anything. With one last look at the peaceful stream, they set off, leaving behind the horrors of the night and riding towards an uncertain future. Meanwhile, back in Umuaka, news of Adana's escape spread like wildfire. Alana was beside herself with rage and fear, torn between concern for her daughter and terror at what Obiora might do. How could this happen, she railed at Namdi, after everything we sacrificed, everything we gained. That foolish girl has ruined everything. Namdi, who had been quietly mourning the loss of his daughter since her marriage, finally found his voice. Sacrificed? Gained? Listen to yourself, woman. Our daughter was in danger and you speak of what we've gained? Alana faltered, for once at a loss for words. I warned you. Namdi continued, his voice growing stronger. I told you no good would come of forcing her into this marriage. But you were too blinded by greed to listen. And now, who knows what horrors our child has endured? Tears sprang to Alana's eyes, the first genuine emotion she had shown in months. What have I done? She whispered. My baby. My Adana. 
As the reality of the situation sank in, the villagers began to talk. Whispers of dark magic, of women disappearing, of Obiora's true nature spread from house to house. The gifts and financial gain that had seemed so important now felt tainted, cursed. In the midst of this turmoil, a messenger arrived from Obiora's compound. He carried a simple message. Return Adana, or face the consequences. The village elders gathered to discuss this threat. Some argued for compliance, fearing Obiora's wrath. Others, emboldened by the revelation of his true nature, called for defiance. In the end, it was Namdi who swayed the decision. Standing before the elders, he spoke with a passion and conviction that few had ever seen in the quiet farmer. We have allowed evil into our midst, he declared. We have sacrificed our daughters on the altar of greed and ambition. No more. I say we stand against this monster, whatever the cost. For Adana, for all our children, for the very soul of Umuaka. A cheer went up from the gathered villagers. Even those who had benefited most from Obiora's largesse found themselves moved by Namdi's words. As the village prepared for whatever retaliation might come, Alana approached her husband. Her fine clothes and jewelry were gone, replaced by her old work dress. Her face, free of the haughty expression it had worn for so long, was etched with sorrow and regret. Namdi, she said softly, can you ever forgive me? He looked at her for a long moment, seeing not the ambitious, grasping woman she had become, but the girl he had fallen in love with so many years ago. There will be time for forgiveness later, he said finally. For now we must focus on finding our daughter and bringing her home safely. Alana nodded, squaring her shoulders. Then let us begin. I have contacts in the neighboring villages. Perhaps they have seen or heard something. As they set to work, a new understanding passed between them. Whatever happened, they would face it together, as they should have all along. Far away, Adana and Ikenna continued their journey. They traveled by night and hid during the day, always alert for signs of pursuit. Ikenna's friends had provided them with supplies and information about safe routes, but they knew they couldn't relax their guard. One evening, as they made camp in a small cave, Adana finally felt ready to talk about what had happened in Obiora's compound. It was like something out of a nightmare, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. The way that woman, Amara, changed, and Obiora said it had happened before to all his wives. Ikenna listened silently, his arm around her shoulders. He was going to do it to me, Ikenna. He was going to turn me into... into that thing. And for what? Power? Wealth? She shuddered. How can such evil exist in the world? Ikenna pulled her closer. I don't know, my love, but it does exist, and we must be strong to fight against it. You survived, Adana. You escaped. That shows how strong you truly are. She looked up at him, her eyes shining with unshed tears. I couldn't have done it without you. You saved me. He shook his head. We saved each other and together we'll find a way through this. As they sat there, the warmth of the fire keeping the night's chill at bay, Adana felt a glimmer of hope. Yes, they were running for their lives. Yes, the future was uncertain, but she was with the man she loved, the man who had risked everything to rescue her. Whatever came next, they would face it side by side. Little did they know that back in Umuaka, events were unfolding that would soon draw them back into the heart of the danger they were fleeing. For Obiora, enraged by Adana's escape and the village's defiance, was preparing to unleash a terrible vengeance. And the White Python, once Amara, now something far more ancient and powerful, was stirring with a hunger that could not be denied. As night fell over the land, storm clouds gathered on the horizon. A wind picked up, carrying with it the scent of rain and the whisper of approaching danger. In hidden places, old magic stirred and the battle lines between good and evil, between love and power, were being drawn. For Adana and Ikenna, for the people of Umuaka, and for all those caught in the web of Obiora's dark ambitions, a reckoning was coming. And when it arrived, it would shake the very foundations of their world. As dawn broke over the dense Nigerian forest, Adana and Ikenna emerged from their makeshift shelter, eyes alert for any sign of danger. 
They had been on the run for nearly a week now, each day taking them further from the familiar landscapes of their youth and deeper into unknown territory. How are you feeling? Ikenna asked, his voice soft with concern. I'm all right, just tired and worried. Her eyes met his, filled with a mixture of love and fear. Do you think they're still looking for us? Ikenna's jaw tightened. Obiora isn't the type to give up easily. We need to keep moving. As they gathered their meager belongings and prepared to set out, a rustling in the nearby bushes made them freeze. Ikenna stepped protectively in front of Adana, his hand reaching for the machete at his waist. Who's there? He called out, his voice steady despite the fear coursing through him. Show yourself. To their surprise, an old woman emerged from the foliage. Her white hair was wild and unkempt, and her eyes seemed to look right through them. Ah, the runaways, she cackled, her voice raspy with age. I've been expecting you. Adana clutched Ikenna's arm. Who are you? How do you know about us? The old woman smiled, revealing a mouth with only a few remaining teeth. I am Nei the mother of waters. I know many things, child, including the great danger that follows you. Ikenna's grip on his machete tightened. If you're working for Obiora, peace, young one, Nimiri interrupted, raising a gnarled hand. I serve no man, least of all one who dabbles in such dark magic. I am here to help you. Adana stepped forward, hope blooming in her chest. You can help us? How? The old woman's eyes softened as she looked at Adana. You carry a great burden, child. The mark of the python is upon you, even if its transformation was not completed. But there is a way to break its hold. How? Adana asked eagerly. Please, tell us what to do. Nemamiri reached into a pouch at her waist and pulled out a small iridescent stone. Take this. When the time comes, you will know how to use it. But beware, the path ahead is fraught with danger. The python's hunger grows, and Obiora's rage knows no bounds. She pressed the stone into Adana's hand. It was cool to the touch and seemed to pulse with an inner light. Thank you, Adana whispered, clutching the stone tightly. The old woman nodded, then turned her gaze to Ikenna. And you, brave one. Your love is strong, but it will be tested. Remember, true strength comes not from the arm, but from the heart. With those cryptic words, Namiri turned and melted back into the forest, leaving Adana and Ikenna staring after her in bewilderment. Do you think we can trust her? Ikenna asked, his voice uncertain. Adana looked down at the stone in her hand. I don't know, but right now it's the only hope we have. As they resumed their journey, neither of them noticed the pair of yellow eyes watching them from the shadows, nor the massive white coils that slithered silently in their wake. Meanwhile, back in Umuaka, tension had reached a fever pitch. Obiora's ultimatum hung over the village like a storm cloud, and opinions were divided on how to respond. In the centre of the village, a heated argument was taking place. Alana, her face drawn with worry, stood facing a group of angry villagers. We can't just hand Adana over to that monster, she cried, her voice hoarse from hours of debate. One of the village elders, a man named Ezioba, stepped forward. And what of the rest of us? Are we to suffer for your daughter's disobedience? Obiora's wrath will fall on all our heads. Murmurs of agreement rippled through the crowd. Namdi, standing quietly beside his wife, finally spoke up. My friends, my neighbours, he began, his voice calm but firm. I understand your fear, but think of what you are suggesting. Would you sacrifice an innocent girl to save yourselves? What kind of people would that make us? A hush fell over the gathering. Namdi continued, his words gathering strength. We have allowed fear and greed to guide our actions for too long. It's time we remembered who we are, a people of strength, of courage, of compassion. If we stand together, Obiora cannot defeat us. As he spoke, a change came over the villagers. Backs straightened, eyes hardened with resolve. Even Ezioba nodded grudgingly. Fine words, Namdi, he said, but how do you propose we fight against Obiora's dark magic? Before Namdi could respond, a commotion at the edge of the crowd drew everyone's attention. 
a group of young men burst into the clearing, supporting between them a figure covered in blood and dirt. Help, one of them shouted. It's Chidi. He's been attacked. The villagers parted to let them through. As they laid the injured man on the ground, Alana gasped in recognition. Chidi? But he left the village months ago. What happened to him? Chidi's eyes fluttered open, unfocused with pain. The snake, he whispered. It, it came for me. Obiora, he knows. With those words, he lost consciousness. As the village healer rushed forward to tend to his wounds, a chill ran through the gathering. Namdi's voice cut through the rising panic. You see? Obiora has already begun his attack. We must act now, not just for Adana, but for all of us. Alana stepped forward, her face set with determination. Namdi is right. I, I bear much of the blame for what has happened. My greed, my ambition, they blinded me to the truth. But no more. I will do whatever it takes to make this right. A murmur of surprise ran through the crowd. Alana had been known for her pride and stubbornness. To hear her admit her fault so openly was shocking. Ezioba stroked his chin thoughtfully. Perhaps, perhaps there is a way. There are old stories, tales of a power that can stand against even the darkest of magics. What kind of power? Namdi asked eagerly. The old man's eyes gleamed. It is said that deep in the heart of the forest, there is a sacred grove. Within it lies a spring of pure water, blessed by the ancient spirits. Its waters are said to have the power to cleanse any evil, to break any curse. Hope blossomed on the faces of the villagers, but Alana's brow furrowed with concern. But the forest is vast, she said. How will we find this grove? And what of Obiora? He will not sit idly by while we search. Namdi placed a reassuring hand on his wife's shoulder. We will find a way. We must. As the villagers began to plan their expedition, none of them noticed the small white snake that slithered away from the gathering, its eyes glowing with an unnatural intelligence. Miles away in his compound, Obiora paced restlessly. The loss of Adana had thrown his carefully laid plans into disarray, and the defiance of the village only added to his fury. Master, a trembling servant approached. There is news. Obiora whirled to face him, his eyes flashing dangerously. Speak. The great python, it, it has left the compound. We cannot find it anywhere. For a moment, Obiora was silent, his face unreadable. Then, slowly, a smile spread across his features, a smile that would have chilled the blood of anyone who saw it. So, he murmured, the hunt has begun. Good. He turned to the servant, his voice sharp with command. Prepare my things. It seems I must deal with this matter personally. As the servant scurried away, Obiora's gaze turned to the horizon, where storm clouds were gathering. Run, little Adana, he whispered. Run as far and as fast as you can. In the end, it will make no difference. You are mine, and I will have what is mine. With those ominous words hanging in the air, Obiora began his preparations. The final confrontation was approaching, and the fate of Adana, Ikena, and all of Umuaka hung in the balance. As night fell, Adana and Ikena made camp in a small clearing. The events of the day their encounter with Ene Miri and the mysterious stone she had given them weighed heavily on their minds. What do you think she meant? Adana asked, turning the stone over in her hands. Its surface seemed to shimmer in the firelight, about knowing how to use it when the time comes. Ikena shook his head, his brow furrowed in thought. I don't know, but I've been thinking, all this talk of magic and curses. It reminds me of stories my grandmother used to tell. Adana leaned forward, intrigued. What kind of stories? She spoke of a time long ago when the world was full of spirits and magic. There were those who could harness these powers for good and those who used them for evil. Ikena's voice took on a rhythmic quality as if reciting from memory. But the most powerful magic of all, she said, was the magic of the heart. Love, courage, sacrifice. These were the forces that could overcome even the darkest of evils. Adana smiled, reaching out to take his hand. Your grandmother sounds like a wise woman. 
She was, Ikenna agreed, his eyes distant with memory. I wish she were here now. She'd know what to do. Meanwhile, back in Umuaka, preparations for the journey to the sacred grove were in full swing. Namdi and Alana, along with a group of the village's bravest warriors, were gathering supplies and weapons. Are you sure about this? Alana asked her husband, her voice tight with worry. The forest is dangerous, and we don't even know if this grove really exists. Namdi took her hand, his eyes filled with a determination she had never seen before. We have to try, Alana. For Adana, for our village, for everything we hold dear. We can't let fear hold us back any longer. Alana nodded, squeezing his hand. You're right. I've let fear and greed guide my actions for too long. It's time to make things right. The group set out into the forest. As they disappeared into the shadows of the trees, the villagers left behind could only pray for their safe return. Little did they know that Obiora himself was also on the move. Mounted on a midnight black horse, surrounded by his most loyal and ruthless guards, he thundered through the forest. His face was a mask of cold fury, his eyes gleaming with an inhuman light. Find them, he snarled to his men. Find them and bring them to me. Alive. As the various groups converged on the heart of the forest, the air seemed to thicken with tension. Ancient magic stirred, awakened by the approaching conflict. In hidden glades and secret caves, the spirits of the land watched and waited. The final confrontation was drawing near, and the fate of not just Adana and Ikenna, but of all Umuaka, hung in the balance. As dawn broke over the forest, painting the sky in shades of gold and crimson, the stage was set for a battle between love and power, between light and darkness. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Kindly click the subscribe button, like, comment, and share this video. Watch out for more intriguing and eye-catching videos from your favorite YouTube channel.